Hello and thank you for coming along to the next video in my Inventor Tips and Tricks series which is all about how to make stuff just look awesome. Speaking of awesome, <laughs> are you ready to have your mind blown? No, really, are you ready to have your mind blown? Wait for it. Oh yes, it's R2-D2 in all his glory. Uh, all, his, all his glory. Let's, let's ignore the fact that he's missing a leg. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's where that's gone and where, where how he's standing up and not just toppling over. But let's forget about that. It's R two D two, so it is. Right, how to make stuff look awesome? So forget about modelling. You've done your modelling. You've 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 drawn your stuff. You've done all your bits and bobs. You're now ready to impress the gaffer. You're like, look, you're waiting for him to walk past, and you want to make stuff look shiny, so you can kind of walk past and glance at you and go, oh, oh you've been. Oh, that's looking good. Well done. Pat on the back. I remember that in the next play review, Sunshine. You know you know what I mean. You want to make stuff look snazzy, eye-catching. How would you do it? Right. So, yeah, like I said, forget about all the modeling. This is just about switching on all the tools Inventor's got to make stuff just look better. Just jump all the crap, get straight to it. First of all, what you need to do is hit the view tab on the top. Now you can be in a part, you can be in an assembly. I'm in an assembly, um, but the tools are going to be exactly the same. So you're going to hit the view tab along the top. And we're going to focus and concentrate on this area here in the appearance panel. Now, to get us going, we need to make sure our ground plane is in the right place. The ground plane is the area in which the shadows and the reflections are cast. So we're going to be concentrating on shadows, on reflections, on textures, and we need to make sure they're all going to be projected into the right area. So if you select ground plane, if you find that your ground plane is just not in the right place, like obviously that's not the ground, he's not kind of face, you know, free falling into the, into the ground, you know, it's, it's not quite right. To change the position of the ground, we obviously want it to be under his feet. That kind of goes without saying. So if you think about the model that you're working with, look at where you want the ground to be. Look at where your model's facing. Select the view cube, so you're kind of looking head on. Now, we want the ground plane to be here. So what you do is you select the face of the view cube, which kind of corresponds to where the ground plane would be horizontally, and then right click on the view cube face, and then set that view as front. And that'll change the ground plane to be kind of perpendicular looking on to that face in the view cube. And that's your ground plane done. Don't need to do anything more with it. It should intelligently know to put the ground plane touching the bottom most face of your model, if you kind of know what I mean. The most extensive, furthest down face of your model, that's where it'll put the ground plane. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change it from an orthographic view to a perspective view. So you select this button here, and then you change that to perspective. And now perspective, it's not recommended that you model and sketch in perspective mode. It kind of skew whiffs things. It adds perspective to the camera and it doesn't make things easy to model with. If you want to be a bit more kind of extreme with perspective mode, hold down Control and Shift on the keyboard and then scroll the middle wheel and it will modify the amount of perspective Inventor has on the camera. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the perspective mode, it does look a lot better than orthographic. So Control, Shift and then scroll the middle wheel to change that. There you go. Okay, so that's the camera now put in perspective mode. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to enable reflections. There's not a lot you need to do with this, guys. Just hit reflections, and that will add the reflection to the floor. If you don't want reflections, you don't have to put that on. But like I said, it does add that extra bit of realism. If you want to change the amount of reflection that you've got on the ground plane, select this drop-down arrow here, select settings, and you can change the amount of um, reflection in a percentage value. You know, sort of stronger reflection going down to a more... Uh, subtle reflection. Okay, we're then going to work with shadows. Now, arguably, shadows are the biggest factor when it comes to making something look realistic, other than you know lighting and that sort of stuff. Shadows kind of the big, you know, big the big smack in the face that makes things go, you know, for, to the next level. So, if you drop hit the drop down next to shadows, you've got three types of shadows. You've got shadows that are cast on the ground. You've got shadows that are cast onto each other, so object shadows. And you've also got ambient shadows. Ambient shadows are the kind of little shadows that appear, little nooks and crannies, little crevices inside your model. Those are the ambient shadows. Now, to be honest, we just want them all on, so select all shadows. And you can see, well, it's starting to look a lot better. It's starting to look a lot more realistic. To play around with the shadows, select the drop down arrow next to shadows, select settings, and then on the slide bars at the bottom, you can change the density of the shadows. You know, some very extreme, which just looks ridiculous. So you can just kind of play around with it. It's not an exact science. It's just so it kind of looks right. Ambient shadows, that's how much ambient 
darkness, I guess, <laughs> you've got going on there. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not a graphic designer. I don't know what these terms are, are all about, but you know, you can move it up and down, so it sort of looks about right. I'm happy with that. Softness is how sharp the shadows are, or how blurred the shadows are. So, again, just play around with it, trial and error, until you're happy enough with with what you've got. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll do. Okay. The next thing we're going to have a look at is the visual style. Now, on the visual style drop-down list here, you've got a number of different types. We've got sort of shaded, we've got shaded with edges, we've got you know, shaded with hidden edges, on all those sort of things. Now, by default, you tend to be on the shaded texture. We want to switch it to realistic. Now, on face value, it doesn't really look like it's done much. But that's because R2 has been modelled with just some very basic textures. He's got a chrome tin head and he's got like a white plastic body. However, if I go across to something which is a little bit more textured, shall we say, I've got a sphere here with one of the um, sort of tile textures on them. If you select the Autodesk Appearance Library on the uh, Texture drop-down list, you'll be presented with a metric shitload of textures to use. There's tons of them. What you're looking at here is the shaded texture. Now, when you select Realistic, the majority of these textures here have a secondary alternative texture which they will switch to when you select realistic. Look at the way this is now. When I select realistic, the texture changes to a more sort of grooved, a more shiny, a more realistic looking texture. Shaded, realistic. Now, like I said, pretty much every one of these has got an alternative. Some of them don't look so different, some of them are very dramatic. Uh, but, you know, it's, you can have a look at them. A lot of the metals, you know, like aluminium polished, the grooves become more prominent. So you can play around with that to your heart's content. So switching it to realistic switches on the more realistic looking textures. Right. Okay. So to go balls to the wall with this, to get things sort of finished off, select this option here, two lights. That's the kind of environment we're working with here. We're going to use one of these alternate environments. Now, these are called IBLs, Image Based Lighting environments. What it means is that Inventor is going to apply an image scene around your model and because it's image-based lighting when you've got the realistic materials or texture switched on the extents of the image-based lighting environment will reflect off your model so you'll actually see the environment in the reflections and the textures on your model. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop R2D2 onto Tantooine Tantooine, you know what I mean? And there he is, he's in the desert. R2 is in the desert. And what I mean by image-based lighting, you can see in this sort of spherical, whatever it is on the front of his noggin, you can see a reflection of the environment on the textures on the model. So that's what image-based lighting is all about. So R2 is starting to look pretty dapper now. If you if you find that you know it's still not quite right, there's still something you're not all that happy with, you can go back into the shadows and say you know you know the you know the sun's quite bright. Let's make the shadows a bit a bit darker. You know so it does start to look a little bit more realistic. Uh, I'm really generally no, I'm just making this up as I go along. No idea what I'm doing. Uh, you can you can increase the ambience, lower the ambience, make it a bit brighter, make it a bit duller. Whatever suits the model that you're working with. Okay, so we've now gone from something which looked pretty dull, a bit pretty drab, to R2D2 looking absolutely gangster and ready to kick some Sandman's ass. That's what R2 is all about uh, with his missing legs. So he's just, uh, yeah, he's going to topple over and he's not going to get very far. Poor R2. Uh, but I can turn his head. He can, <laughs> he can spy for danger. You know, you can tell C3PO what's going on and uh, report that back to Skywalker. Um, I'm just just talking shit now. Uh, I'm not quite happy with the ambient shadows, as in they're a bit too extreme. That'll do. So yeah, I mean R2's not the best model, you know. Although he is quite good, he's not modelled to the. Um, he's not modelled brilliantly. The textures aren't super on R2D2. Um, but the next thing, the final nail in the coffin for this is the ray tracing. Now ray tracing is highly CPU computer processing intensive. When you switch on ray tracing, it switches to an alternate rendering engine and it takes a bit of time to process the ray tracing, um, but it makes it a hell of a lot more realistic, massively more realistic. Ray tracing has got three settings. It's got interactive, good and best. Interactive gives you a kind of okay ray tracing, very quick. Uh, very quickly processed ray tracing image, which, yeah, it looks alright. You know, it you might think that it actually doesn't look any different whatsoever to how it did before. But then when you disable ray tracing, watch the model, it did. 
you know it's very sort of gradual the ray tracing effect but it it is visually a lot different the lines are sharper it ray tracing is all about calculating rays of light from the light sources how they interact with the objects and bounce off each other um you know the edges are a lot more sharp the light's a lot more intensive it's a lot more focused it's a lot more realistic when you switch to good it takes a hell of a lot longer to process but the image quality is a lot better what you would need to do with um, the good and the best ray tracing settings is basically just click it and then go bugger off for a half an hour wait for it to finish because yeah, it's going to take quite some time but you can see even after only eight to ten percent it's starting to look pretty good um, and with best it's just like forget about it you know just forget about it all together go away you know leave it overnight come back in the morning hope it hasn't crashed and you'll have a pretty good image to work with but you can see how it's yeah, sort of speckly and it's calculating all the rays of light um, sort of uh, pixel by pixel so yeah uh, CP, uh, the ray trace rendering is very CPU intensive the better the processor you have the more cores you have and the faster those cores the better you're gonna you know the, the faster it's gonna be um, so so that's how it take a model from sort of average into looking pretty awesome uh, the, the results you get will be entirely dependent on the textures that you've used and the quality of the model that you've designed so you're completely free to play with that and uh, just go for a bit of trial and error you know play with the textures there is a ton of textures for you to use in the Autodesk appearance library to play around with v various different plastics metals and rubbers and whatnot to to mess around with so yeah hopefully you found that useful and if you did press like on the video put some comments in there and i will create some more video for you guys in the tips and tricks sessions thank you and see ya